Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Microbit uh, webinar. A uh, whole bunch of you from Victoria here, and we're going to be um, playing with um, Microbits and sending messages around the room, and you'll be uh, looking how you can also build little, little things that will be able to send messages back and forth, and we'll show you how that all works. So hopefully um, you learn a lot, and there's uh, something new and fun for you all to um, experiment with. Um, and we want this session to be as interactive as we can. And today we're going to be looking at uh, these devices called microbits. I'm not sure if you can see in my little camera there. That's a microbit. Can you type in the chat if you've used a microbit before? Um, you can hit yes or no in the chat. Um, Penny's definitely used microbits before. <laughs> yes. Bunch of you people saying no. Uh, that's all right. If you haven't, We'll explain all about them and um, and we'll um, show you what you can you can use. A scratch can look up with microbits, William. Look, looks like this is new for everyone, but um, that's great. We'll be learning lots of lots of new things. And so there's two of us here today that's going to be teaching you. Um, my name and we're from the University of Sydney. Um, my name's Owen Brazier, and uh, with me is Penny. Um, uh, we have a background in uh, engineering, both of us, but now we write uh, education resources for kids just like you um, to learn how to um, uh, control computers and get them to do whatever you tell them to. That's basically what we do. And today we'll be focusing on these little devices called microbits that you can uh, write instructions for and get them to do um, whatever you say essentially. So you'll be the, the master of that. And these same skills, you'll learn um, uh, the things, the same ideas that power all devices, like your phone, like the device you're watching this WebEx um, webinar from. Everything uses these same ideas. Uh, so Penny, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Penny. I'm not a teacher, but I write educational stuff for small computers just like this um and my education was actually in more robotics engineering yeah. so a microbit is basically a small computer for a robot um, and it leads into some really interesting stuff yeah and so if you but there will definitely be time for questions at the end so if you do have any robot questions for penny uh, please make sure you type those into the chat and we'll make sure we can we can answer all of all of those as well. Um, so to give you an idea of what the microbit is, there's this uh, scale that we've drawn from big computers on the left. On the left, you might see uh, uh, a server room actually, which which, which could have um, a refresh. Um, which could have hundreds and hundreds of computers. Apparently, I've got to refresh the slides. Um, so let's present that. Um, and sorry about that. And it gets to smaller and smaller to the right. So on the left might be a server room. If you've, um, if you've used uh, Gmail or Google Mail before, um, all your emails would be stored on servers just like this in one of their data centers. Um, it moves to a regular laptop and we can get smaller and smaller to a calculator. Um, and then a microbit is a little tiny computer um, that's smaller and smaller again. And the, the advantage of these is they're, they're really cheap. They're a few dollars each and they've got lots of fun little sensors that we can uh, control to do exactly what we want, and we can interact with that in the real world. So if we wanted to uh, build a game controller or something like that, then we would uh, program that on one of these little devices. So if you wanted to make your own game controller, I've made a bunch um, when I was learning how to do all of this kind of stuff. This is uh, the device that you would first uh, use. Um, so Penny, anything else you want to say about the microbit? Yeah, so one interesting thing is if you go back one slide, you can see there's one more picture to the very far right that's less powerful than a microbit, and that's the satellite that took people to the moon, which is 
just incredible. Everything in technology and robotics is moving so fast. The micro bit, which fits in my hand, costs about 30 bucks, is actually more powerful than the Apollo satellites. Yeah. And so that's uh, Apollo 11, that picture, Penny? Yeah, that'll be yeah. it. <laughs> so using one of those little things in our pockets is actually has more computing power than the thing that took us to the moon all, all those years ago. So that's, um, it's pretty amazing that you have more uh, computing power just, um, just in, in your pockets. And so you can do quite a, quite a lot with them. Uh, um, so the scope is, is actually um, limitless. So these little micro bits, and on the front at the top picture, you can see there's a little five by five LED grid with a couple of buttons. And we'll be uh, drawing lots of pictures and displaying them on this little LED grid. So we'll be getting you to tell me what to draw and um, I'll, try and, I'll try and interpret your instructions in the chat. And at the bottom, there's a whole bunch of sensors that, um, that, are, that are on the board um, as well. And so we're actually just going to dive right in and write our uh, very first um, micro bit program. Um, so what I will do is I'll jump to my page and I'm going to go to um, makecode.microbit.org. You don't need to do this, but if you were to um, Victoria is awesome. Is what we're going to give our project. We're going to give it a name. Victoria is awesome, and I can't type. Um, and I'll click create there, and we can create our own little project. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just draw a picture. So I'm going to get this basic menu and draw this show LEDs here. And we can draw anything we like with this five by five grid. Does anything, does anyone have any ideas of what they'd like me to draw? Do you want me to draw a happy face? Do you want me to draw a silly face? A smiley face? Draw a tree, Nathaniel? Will it, um, William, a heart? Okay, some great suggestions. I might draw, uh, there's a star from Sunny. Okay, I'll draw a couple of those. So let's try and draw a happy face. We might click the buttons and that kind of looks like a happy face. And if we give it a few seconds, we can see that the happy face appears on the left. And what they call this is they call this a simulator. So whatever I type in, it, it simulates that on the, on the uh, device in the browser. That device is not a real device, um, but it is something that um, just will show me what to expect when I load it onto a, um, a real, a real micro bit, which I'll do in a second. Okay. So someone else suggested draw a tree. So let's see if we can draw a tree. So let's try a little Christmas tree. Maybe, um, that look like a tree. What do you well, it's got flower as another suggestion. I reckon it looks almost more like that. <laughs> almost looks like a flower. Oh yeah, it does quite cool. Let's, let's call this one a flower and a tree or a flower, a, a flower tree um, crossover in pixelated form. And what I'll do is I'll show you how you can make this um, appear on the physical micro bit. So what I'll do is I'm going to download this program plug my micro bit in it'll say save my file and then when i drag my victoria is awesome x what i'm gonna do is um share it such that show myself uh I stop sharing my screen and then I can, can I pin myself to, can everyone see me? Yep. I can see. All right. Can you see the tree in the micro bit there? Yeah. It's yes. kind of flickering a bit as well. It is flickering. Okay. So the picture that you just told me to draw, we could just drag on and then I can show that physically on my real device. And so that's how easy it is to, um, 
to program that. Yeah, it is really cool, uh, Evie. I, yeah, this is why we have a lot of fun with doing this stuff. Um, so whatever we, we can do whatever we like and just drag it in and then we can show that on our um, physical devices. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen again because we can do more than just draw a tree, um, even though that is pretty cool in my opinion. Um, let me let me get the chat back up then I can see all of your messages. Um, we can do a lot more than just than just draw stuff. Um, so what's the next thing? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it uh, show a whole bunch of pictures, like a, a few little animations. Um, so I'm going to keep the tree and then I'm going to draw another picture. And what do you think this next picture should be? Any ideas? A heart uh, with a heart, a star. Um, Grace says a star. Uh, Sunny says a yes circle. I'm not sure what a yes circle is. An apple. Ne ne ne. Um, a circle. A what stick figure as well. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think, Penny? Uh, I reckon we can draw the circle. That'll okay. All right. It'll be almost a circle. Let's see, like like this. Whoa. Oh. Like that. <laughs> Kind of like the circle. So we go a star of the tree, then a circle. Um, but you'll notice that this only happened once. And the reason why it only happened once is because it was in this block called on start. Can you see this on start? There's another block here called forever. So what do you think we need to do to make this animation run forever? Go between um, the tree and the circle. Put it in forever, exactly, William. Tia, perfect, well done. Drag the blocks into forever. So if I drag them here into forever, my simulator will restart again. And now it's doing this animation forever. Um, there's a whole bunch of pre-built little uh, icons. So for example, there's this heart and I can select, um, who suggested, Julian su suggested a tick, so I might make that one a tick. And now if I wait for that to start up again in my, we've got this animation going in my simulator that you can see, which is uh, a tree, a tick, and then a circle. Um, great, William, scratches like this, and you've done it for ages, that's, that's awesome. And there's a few things that um, the microbit can do that Scratch can't do. And we'll, and we'll get to that uh, in a little bit. But we just wanted to show you um, just a few of the things that you can do. And so if you wanted to make any kind of animations, um, we, can, we, can do, we can do that. But what, what we might like is to put a, put a welcome message. Um, so what do you think this welcome message should say? Everyone, does anyone have any ideas? Hi. Hi is a pretty good idea. Um, can we make a cake because it's your birthday? Happy birthday, Yo-Yo. Yo um, happy birthday maybe is a good is a good message. Good morning is also a good message. Let's put good morning. I quite like that one. So to write a message, instead of showing an icon or showing something on the LEDs, we'll go to our basic menu and select the show string block. Um, computers like to call text a string. I don't know why it likes to call text a string, but that's what they call it. So, and string just means some text and a message is usually gonna be some text. So we'll drag this show string into our program. To be a welcome message though, do I put it in on start or do I put it in forever? Which one do you think? On start, Aditya, Tia, Ethan, all oh, correct. We're going to put it in on start and I'm going to write um, welcome. So now what we expect to happen is on the left, our program should uh, display welcome once and then it should go into our animation. Yeah, great work everyone. Lisa, Bella, Julian, Caitlin, 
Um, you all got that correct. So we can show a message once on start, which means run whatever's in this block at the beginning once. Then after you've done that for forever, or while we've got power, do whatever whatever is in the um, forever block. And you can make that uh, happen on your physical device. So if you don't believe me yet, we're gonna write a different message and you're gonna tell me what that message is. And then I'm gonna write it on my micro bit and we'll show it uh, show it to you all. So what should the, the, welcome, the new welcome message be? Write my name. I might write uh, uh, what's up, what's up, Sonny. I might do what's up, sure. What's up? And um, I'll download that onto my uh, device. I'm gonna save it. And it'll take me a few seconds to drag it onto the physical micro bit. You might be able to see that it's copying over. And then if I stop sharing my screen and then look at this, if I'll reset my device, it says, what's, what's up? There you go, Harry. You're the master of, um, of the micro bit on my, on my particular screen. Did you all see that? Cool. Um, great. Awesome. So it doesn't matter what you write, you can just have it and whatever you type, you, you're the ones that are in control of what you can see on, on, on the devices. And that's why the micro bits, micro bits really, really fun. Um, all right. So we've got the, um, the on start and forever blocks. We've got writing messages. It would be great if we could find some way of choosing uh, what kind of uh, thing we want to do. So for example, we could shake, um, we could shake um, the micro bit and perform some kind of action. Harry suggested doing music. Um, it can also do music as well. Um, but today, I'm not sure if you knew this, but today is um, International Scissors Paper Rock Day. And Aditya suggests as rock, rock, paper, scissors. It's actually the national international day of um, rock, paper, scissors or scissors, paper, rock, or I'm not sure which order you're meant to say it in. Um, but I'm a strong believer in scissors, paper, rock. Uh, um, <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll make a uh, rock, paper, scissors, um, little, little uh, interactive um, thing. So we can, uh, Press a button and it will choose um, whether to display a rock, whether to display um, paper, or whether to display scissors. And so to that, we're going to need to get some kind of input. So here, if we've got on button pressed, I might remove some of these um, forever blocks. I'm going to go basic and then I'm going to get an icon. Um, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a rock. And so do you think a rock, what's a good representation of a rock? I think uh, the suggestion before of a circle, with a circle being all filled in like this. So like a rock and then we'll fill in, do you think that looks like a rock, everyone? Circle filled in. What they think it's going to be. Um, so that's gonna be a rock and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a different one. And next one's going to be paper. Um, so what do you think paper is going to look like? How can we represent paper in our little LED screen? As Grace says a fair, a square not filled in. Tia and Sunny say fill it all in. Um, fill the whole screen. Well, the problem with filling it in is that then it'll look almost exactly like our rock. So what I think we'll do is we'll take um, Grace's suggestion and make a square that's not fill in. So thanks, Julia. Julian is not filling it in. Okay, so let's draw around the outside and that's going to be our paper. How about that? 
Um, could make the rock smaller, but we want a big rock. Um, uh, Mayan. Um, and the next one is going to be scissors. And so the micro bit, we only got two buttons, um, but we need, we want a third way to interact with, um, with the micro bit. So we could either choose button A plus B, or should we choose to shake? Which one do you think? Shake? Lots of people are saying shake. Okay, I, th I thought that might be the case. Um, in that case, we'll get the on shake block here. And the good thing about the scissors is there's actually an icon for scissors already. And it looks like that. So here, we'll have this program run. It'll say, uh, what's up, like we had before. And then I'm gonna click the shake. And then can you see the scissors there? They look like scissors, don't they? All right, cool. And so now in uh, celebration of our scissors, paper, rock day, we've got our uh, scissors, paper, rock game that we could make. But there's one thing that we would like to do here that we don't currently have, and that's the ability to clear it. So I'm going to uh, make another input and have it be both buttons. And then I'm going to go to the basic menu and get the clear screen block. And then when I press button A and B, it should clear the screen so we can play the next game of uh, rock, paper, scissors. So if you downloaded this on two different micro bits, you could play scissors, paper, rock against each other. And you'd have a way to both play the game and then clear the screen so you can play the next game. Does that make sense to everyone? Do you want me to download it onto mine and show you all, or do you believe me that it will work? All right. Yes, yes, it will work. Download, download, all right. Lots of people saying download, okay. I'll submit to the will of the people. And I'll download that one. And it always says Victoria is awesome. So I'll copy that one over to my micro bit. You can, can you, you should be able to see the progress bar happening there, 38%. Okay, so now let me uh, stop my screen share. And you should be able to see my screen now. I might reset it so it says what's up again, because I never changed that part. What's up? Okay, and so nothing happens yet. Um, but if I press the A button, do you remember what's going to happen? What do you think will happen? Type in the chat, what do you think will be displayed? Rock. Tia says a rock, and Gad says a rock, rock. So I press the A button, and then there you go, there's our rock. Great work, everyone. And if I press B, what was it gonna be? Evie and Yo-Yo say paper. There we go, can you see the paper? Great, and then if I shake it, we're gonna see scissors, right? So if I shake it like this, there you go. There's the scissors. Um, and to clear it and play the next game, I'm just gonna press both buttons at the same time. And that clears it. And so even across the internet from ages away, I can put the same program <laughs> online. <laughs> what's up? Say what's up. Can everyone see Penny's screen? Yeah, I can press. I'll lock Penny's screen. Yeah, and so Penny's programmed this on her her computer and she's got the same one and so she shakes it and gets the scissors. Okay, so we can actually play it. All right, so I think, I think we have to do this. I think we're gonna play scissors, paper, rock again, over thing. <laughs> so it, you can just private message us which one you think we should do. Penny's gonna clear her. Uh, William, you can do a random. Yes, you can definitely do do a random one. If you shake it, it will choose a random one. But when we're playing scissors, paper, rock, we often want to choose uh, which one it is. Okay, so we're gonna go. Um, okay, scissors, paper, rock. I I, I, did, I went the scissors. It looks like Penny did. Good the advice, Caitlin. <laughs> Yo-Yo gave me the scissors, unfortunately, Penny, <laughs> Penny won that round. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again. So is that fun, everyone? Cool. And so you can make in a celebration of Scissors Paper Rock Day, we can make our own Scissors Paper Rock game. And this is exactly the type of thing that you do in digital technologies. We call it learning, but actually we're just playing with toys and building cool stuff, I think. Um, don't tell your teachers. Don't tell your teachers that. <laughs> um, but all but all of these ideas to be able to interact with buttons and then perform some kind of action, these are exactly the types of things um, that uh, we use in game controllers and making um, our computers work and uh, everything that's built in society. So for example, when you um, go to your microwave and press the buttons in the microwave, there's a device just like the micro bit inside that that's reading all your button presses and deciding what kind of action to perform to turn on the microwave, for example. It might be setting a timer and then telling it to go. And so just getting this input and then doing some different kind of output is really all that um, computers computers do. So we're going to level up here a little bit and we're going to um, do a bit of a demo on how um, our micro bit, so yes, Mayan, we can make other things. We can make lots of, lots of different things. Um, we're going to get our micro bit to be able to send radio messages wirelessly to each other. So if you had your micro bit in a classroom and then one of your classmates, uh, hi Kingsley, welcome, uh, had a micro bit in their hands, you'd be able to send secret messages back and forth to each other and no one else would be able to, to see it. And so do you guys want to learn how to do that? Okay. Yes, great. So let's um let's remove all of these old blocks. Sorry, I'm gonna have to remove the WhatsApps uh, string at the beginning. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, use the radio feature of the microbit. And this is the one thing that Scratch can't do. Um, so when we do the radio, we, we, need to, we need to tell each other which radio channel that we're on. I mean, when I was in primary school, I remember having little uh, walkie talkies um, and uh, each walkie talkie uh, has a different channel that you select or like when you select a radio, um, if you're in the car, you might select um, a different, different channel to, to, listen, to listen to. And exactly the same as with the micro bit, but we call it a group. And so we always need to on start, drag this set group in, block in, and we can select a group. It can be whatever one we like. And what's your favorite number, Penny? Um, 52. 52. 52. Doesn't matter which, which group. Well, I should, I should have asked you actually, which, uh, you are, which, which number is your favorite number. In fact, I might do that. Which, which number is your favorite? I think you guys are cooler than Penny. <laughs> Go with whatever your group is instead of whatever Penny says. Tyler says four, 14 from Sunny, 42 from Nini, 48. Well, lots of different suggestions. Um, there was a couple of, um, there was a couple, oh, Harry's sending a lots of 14s. Very keen <laughs> on the 14, Harry. Uh, Tia sends 47. Uh, Mayan actually sent 101. So I think I'm going to go with Mayan for 101. So there we go. Let's type in 101. And it doesn't matter which number you pick. The only thing that matters is that the numbers are the same. Okay. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to unbutton A. I'm going to send a message. And so when we press, when every time we press button A, we're just going to send a particular, particular message. Um, and in this case, we're going to send some string. If you remember from before, before the string is a bit like text. Um, and I'm, what, what, what thing should we send? What, what's the word that we should send? Um, hi, how are you? Hi, hi, hi. Lots of hello. Lots of hello. So let's, um, let's go hi exclamation mark. How about that? Um, Caitlin, I think you sent that to me, but I don't think Penny can see that. Um, so let's send the, the word hi. 
And then what we need to do after word hi is being sent, on another micro bit, we're gonna to have to receive that message. So what we can do there is on radio receive, we've got this receive string block here. So we can drag that in. And the thing that we want to do to display that message is to show it on the LEDs. So what I'll do is I'll drag this show string block and um, on radio received, we'll show the string hello. But the thing we want to receive, um, uh, receive is whatever the other micro bit sends. So if we drag this receive string block up the top down into our show string block here, this will display whatever the other person sends. So if well, let's uh, try this out on the simulator. If we press um, button A, and so when I press the button, you'll see a second micro bit appears on the left, and they're both loaded with the same code. So now if I press button A on the top micro bit, I expect it to, to display high on the bottom micro bit. So let's uh, give that a go. So if I press button A here, it sends a message and then high is displayed on the bottom one. So let's press it again, press it up the top. You can see my mouse up there, I press high, and then high gets sent to the micro bit down the bottom. All right, so we can uh, have different messages here, just like we had different um, images with our scissors, paper, rock game. In this case, we can um, send high on button A, and I'm gonna get you all to choose the other message. What are we gonna send on button B? Does anyone have any ideas? Bye, bye, all right, hi and bye. Okay, lots of people saying bye. So um, do you like pizza, Mayan? I do like pizza, but I think we'll make a hi, bye, bye. Um, okay, and we don't need to do any updating of this particular program in order to get it to run. Because up here, if I test it up here and I press button A, I, it will scroll the words high. And then if I press button B, it will scroll by. All right, would you like to see me load this program onto two micro bits and give you a demo? Yes, please. All right, so let's um, get this one. Um, I'll download again. All right. Um, go away. Oh no, my computer might have crashed. <laughs> no, I think we're okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so just give me a, give me a few seconds to load it on. So it takes a tiny bit of time to load it on to all of my, my, uh, the micro bits I've got here. So it'll take about 10 seconds, but what's happening here is the micro bit, uh, has the same functionality as Bluetooth, but it has a little Bluetooth chip in it. Um, but Bluetooth is quite complicated. And so the people that built the micro bit, um, decided to be able to just use the Bluetooth antenna to send different radio messages. All right, so I think this is working. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then I'll um, see if I can pin my video. Can I pin my video? Um, look. Um, so can you see my screen, everyone? Yep. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to keep my hands off the buttons. And if I press my micro bit here on this, on this micro bit, what do you think will happen on this one? And that's going to be button A. It's going to say hi on this one. So if you watch this one, I'm shaking. Um, if I press the button on the right, see, it scrolls the word hi on the other one. What happens if I press button B on this one? If button B is the closest here. It will say bye on this one. See, I'm not on my left. I'm not pressing any buttons. And then it scrolls by. 
So you can see how it's communicating wirelessly. And that's how easy it is to send messages um, around the room in um, using the micro bit. That one says bye over there now. If I press this button here, it will say hi on this one. Oh, does that make sense? Can you, uh, yes, Evie, you can type uh, whatever message uh, you like. Doesn't matter what, um, I, think, I think there's a limit on how long the message could be. Um, and how long is the radius of Bluetooth? That's a fantastic question, Nathaniel. Um, the, it'll go about uh, 10 to 15 meters, um, direct line of sight, or maybe, maybe 20 meters. And so it'll be around, yeah, around 20 meters will be what you'd expect the, the distance to be. So you can communicate with someone uh, 20 meters away. But Penny and I have built, and there's a course that we've built um, uh, that you, you can send messages along again and chain the messages along if you, if you like. Ronald asks, can you send to multiple micro bits? You absolutely can. So what this does is it uses the radio and the radio broadcasts to everyone. And so as long as you've got any other micro bit on the same group, you'll be able to see, um, see those messages that one of the micro bits sends. And so there's lots of different types of games and messages that you can use to, uh, you, yeah, all the micro bits have to be in the same group. Yeah, excellent, Evie. Okay, so we'll do a bit of a recap of all of the things that we learnt just then. I'll have to, um, uh, can you see my screen now, everyone? Yep. Yep, good, just making sure. Let's go full screen. Um, so we've got, we've already done the plan. We've made a small radio project and now we're up to making a big radio project. So we want all of these um, little things. Where do you get a micro bit uh, from? Um, Core Electronics is a good place that stocks them. I think JCAR also stock them. Um, if you Google, where do I buy a micro bit from? I'll put a, I'll post a link in the chat as well. Yeah. Okay, so that was the radio where we can receive a string and then uh, display a particular message. Um, but now we're gonna do a different game. And that game is gonna involve ice cream. Who likes ice cream here? Definitely me. <laughs> me, good. Not you, Ethan, you don't like ice cream. I think, I think you're the only one in the group. Lots of you, Sienna likes ice cream. Yo-Yo really likes ice cream from what I can tell. Uh, oh, that's unfortunate, Ethan, being allergic to it. Um, great, and so what we're gonna do now is we're going to use the micro bit to decide which ice cream is the best ice cream. Okay, and to that we're gonna do, a, um, gonna do the ultimate ice cream showdown. We're gonna choose a few different ice creams and we'll use the micro bit to determine which flavor is the best flavor of ice cream. And we can do a little algorithm to determine um, which one's the best. So Penny, do you wanna talk us through this? Yeah, absolutely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the voting mechanism on Zoom. So let's, uh, not Zoom, on this web. WebEx. Yeah. WebEx, that's it. I'm doing lots of remote things at the moment, apparently. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to vote which is better from chocolate to vanilla. So I'm going to open a poll now. You should get it on the side of your screen and have a vote. Yeah, so which is better? So, so we've got chocolates taking a bit of a, no, vanilla's taking the lead. Oh. Chocolates winning. Oh, this is close. This is All close. Right, chocolate ahead by a little bit. All right, get your votes in everyone. Yeah, we've still got 11 no answers. The polls yep. will be closing soon. Okay. All right, last chance, three, two, one, chocolate. All, All right. right, chocolate was the winner of the first of the first one. And so this is our little um, round knockout round between the chocolate and vanilla. And you can, you can't, um, Sunny, unfortunately, it wasn't uh, vanilla that time, but it was very close. It was 18 to 16, um, chocolate to vanilla. Um, 
And then we're going to go to the next round. Which so is... next round is opening now. We're going to have strawberry and banana. All right. What do you think so... this one will be? Is that, uh, do we close? Oh, uh, wait, oh, do we, I think do we I've got to close the old close pole. Close pole, yep. Yep. All right, poll two coming up now. Strawberry okay. and banana. And put your votes in. For which one's better, strawberry or banana? I think this Strong one's a bit... Strong lead from strawberry. I think this one's a lot clearer. Lots of people saying strawberry. Okay, this one's a pretty clear one. I said, um, I think everyone says that strawberry, or most people, there's 28 to 6. Dang, I think banana can't catch up now, so... So strawberry is the winner. Strawberry is the winner. Okay, so how about we close that poll? And now we have chocolate versus strawberry. And this is going to be decide who's the ice cream champion of this particular round. Um, can I? I might be able to yeah, take oh. the screen. So let me just write the winners here. And we've got chocolate. And then we've also got strawberry. All right. All right. Final poll is opening now. So which one's going to win out of chocolate and strawberry, everyone? Oof. It's, getting, Whoa. it's quite close. <laughs> it depends how good the strawberry is, says Tia. No. <laughs> oh. I mean, let's just go the best chocolate and the best strawberry, I think. The best one that's out there for both of them. All right. 18-13. There's a couple of votes. No answers. Do you know answers if you want to get vote for strawberry? All right. All right, closing in three, two, one. one. Oh, like come back from strawberry, but chocolate's the winner. Chocolate's the winner. So in our ultimate ice cream championship, uh Sunny doesn't really like either. Um oh, but uh, that, that's just what we decided was the best ones. And so what we followed here is we followed an algorithm to determine which one was the best based on the, um, the two knockout rounds. So here we made a decision whether um, uh, chocolate was better than vanilla. And if we thought chocolate was better, we'd press A. And if we thought vanilla was pre um, better, we'd vote for B. And because of those A and B decisions, we can use that on our micro bit to do exactly that decision-making process. And so what I'll do is I'll um, jump back into micro bit, into the micro bit platform now and show you how we can program that exact thing, which is going to be our um, ice cream decider video, um, vote voting system. And we're gonna see which one's better, Chuck, um, and be able to vote from a one micro bit and send that vote to a different micro bit. And this is what our system will look like. Um, on the left, we're going to have uh, the receiver micro bit, this one here on the left. And that's going to receive all the votes um, from everyone else. And so that's just, just like Penny who is running the polls. That's what uh, she would be, she would be this one over here. And all the other micro bits, these other ones, are the, are the micro bits that can vote in and send the messages into whoever the voter master controller is that will receive all of those votes. And that's the system that we're going to build using the, the radio on the micro bit. All right. Would you like me to give that a go? Okay. So let's um, clear all annotations. Okay, great. So let's um, go into uh, back into make code here, which is going to be this one. So I'm going to go back to the micro bit. I'm going to make a brand new project. Um, voting. That's what we're going to call it. What do the numbered things on the bottom of the micro bit do, Nathaniel? They're called pins, and that lets us interact with external devices. Um, okay, so what's the thing that we remember? The first thing we do with the with the radio, uh, everyone. Do you, uh, we we need to set a group? Um, so what number are we going to choose this time? 
Uh, Grace says 23. Grace was in first, so I think we're going to go with Grace's suggestion of 23. Thank you very much. Uh, Tyler, we can't have a thousand because uh, the numbers only go up to 255 is how many groups we can have. So we, unfortunately, we can't have a thousand groups. Okay, so the first thing we do is set a group. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, send the votes. So this is going to be our sending, sending micro bit. So we've done all of this before. So when a button on button A is pressed, we're going to send a string and we're going to send the string called A. And then I'm going to duplicate that. And when button B is pressed, I'm going to send the letter B. And I'm also going to display on the screen which letter I'm sending. So here I'm going to show string A and show string B, just so I can give myself a bit of feedback on which which button I press and lets me know that it actually actually sent it. And that's all we need for our uh, sender radio. The next thing we can do is add our receiver component, which will be, so when we receive a message, we're gonna receive a string and we need to determine if the string is A or if the string is going to be B. And to do that, we're gonna introduce a brand new concept that we haven't covered yet. And that concept's gonna be if statements. So if we have this if condition here, we, um, we can check some condition. And if that condition is true, then we're gonna um, run the, um, the code inside that block. And I'll show you what that means in a, in a minute. But we also need something else, which is to store the number of votes that are coming in. So here I'm going to make a variable and store it in the A count. And what this is going to do is going to ha have a place for me to store the number of A votes that have, that have come in. And similarly, I'm going to make um, a new variable called B count, which is going to store the number of B votes that come in. And so when a message comes in, I can check if that message, if the receive string is equal to A. And if the message coming in is A, I'm going to change the A count by one. I'm going to duplicate that block and do exactly the same thing for B. If the message B comes in, I'm gonna change B count by one. So on our microbit, just like when we received the votes from before, you guys all sent the votes and the polling system counted them up. We're doing exactly the same thing as that polling system that we use to determine um, who got the most votes. Um, so we're storing them now, but we're not displaying them anywhere. So what we can do is display how many votes there are. Yes, Evie, it is, it is quite complex. So when you build more and more different programs, it gets a bit more and more complicated, but we really like ice cream. And so I think we're quite motivated to, um, to, uh, to work through how complex it is in order to determine what the best ice cream is. Cause I think that's a pretty good motivator for me. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show the letter A, and then I'm also going to show um, how many um, how many uh, A count A, A votes are in. So there I've got showing the letter A, and then it shows the number of A votes that have come in, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing for B. So that means I can display how many B votes are in. Okay, so this, this component does both of those things. Um, so we can test it on our little um, micro bit over here. So here we've got um, 
our counts and on the bot on the top one I'm going to be sending the votes and on the bottom one it's going to be receiving the votes. So currently A is zero and B is zero. If I hit A at the top, we expect the bottom one to have display A then one. So I'll hit A at the top. A goes one. B is zero. A is one. B is zero. So our vote worked. If I hit B twice, one two. Now we should select B to show two. So A is one, B is two. And so now it's sending votes and we're receiving them and displaying them. So what I'll do right now is download these, this program onto my micro bits here. And so I can show you um, it working in, in, the real, in the real world. And so you'll tell me which votes to put in and then I'll display it. But I wanna do one thing before I do that. I wanna show a welcome message and the welcome message is gonna be ice cream. I think, I think that's a pretty good welcome message. Couldn't, uh, Sunny asked, couldn't you spam the, uh, you could put in lots of votes, yes, but usually we can tell who's doing that so we, uh, we can kick them off. But uh, th there are ways that we can um, protect against that, but uh, excellent point, you could, Put in lots of votes so you wouldn't use this for elections because um because you couldn't verify who the vote that the one person only has one vote in this particular example that's 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 uh very correct sonny okay so i'm going to shop stop sharing my screen and then i'm going to pin my video okay so if i reset my mic a bit on the on you're right, that should say ice cream. And then it'll display the number of votes that it's received, which is A is zero and B is zero. So I'm gonna press A. Uh, how many times should I press A? Pick a low number, please, in the chat. Uh, three, I'm gonna go with three, thanks. Lots of people saying three, Anya, Anga, Harry. So let's go three, one, one, two, three. A is three, B is zero. Um, okay, and let's go B four for Evie. So I'm gonna press B four times, one, two, three, four. And so A is still three, B is now, oh, I only pressed it three times by the looks of it. So let's press it again. B is four now. So you can see it, it sent the, the votes wirelessly through the air, and then this one received it and displayed how many votes had come in. And so if you imagine there was a lot of these micro bits around, as long as they were on the same group, they could communicate, and then we can use that to determine which was the, the best ice cream.